Is your dog panting a lot, making these loud breathing noises? He or she may have a condition called laryngeal paralysis. In this video, you're gonna find out exactly what it is and what you can do about it. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Fran has sent in a video of her dog, Chester. He's an older yellow lab, and he's got a condition called laryngeal paralysis. It just so happens that the number one breed to have this condition are these guys, and as is Chester, the Labrador Retriever. Come on, Chester, come on. Chester has the classic signs of laryngeal paralysis. He has excessive panting, exercise intolerance. He has these really loud breathing sounds and if you listen again in the video, you can hear him making that. So what's happening is he's trying to breathe in and his airway or his larynx is not dilating and expanding, allowing normal flow of air. So he's got a paralysis of the laryngeal muscles. The nerves are not working properly. <sighs> that airway doesn't expand, making it really difficult for him to breathe. And I mean, you can hear that, where you can hear that, <gasps> that loud sort of breathing, heavy rasping. It's just difficult to get air inside that larynx. Other breeds can also get it. It's not just the labs. I mean, it's also seen the Nabouviers, Huskies, Pyrenees, Bull Terriers, and Dalmatians. Fran reported that with Chester, his laryngeal paralysis has gotten worse. So obviously the more difficulty breathing but also his rear limbs have also gotten weaker. It's just more difficult for him to walk and get up. This disease has now been renamed geriatric onset, laryngeal paralysis and polyneuropathy, meaning now it's a condition of the nervous system that's not only affecting the larynx, but other nerves throughout the body. So what this means is in time, the leg muscles are gonna get weak, hence what we're seeing in Chester, as well too, many of these dogs will develop a condition called mega esophagus, in which the esophagus gets thin and dilated. It can lead to things such as aspiration pneumonia. Uh, your veterinarian can make the diagnosis fairly easily. It involves sedation. Uh, I mean, you're gonna open your dog's throat, have a look in the mouth, and when your dog breathes in, they should actually see the larynx expand. That's what a normal larynx does, and that's where you put the endotracheal tube down. In a dog with laryngeal paralysis, that doesn't happen. And you just see these sort of flappy laryngeal muscles. They just kind of stay together. Your dog tries to breathe in and there's, you know, those muscles aren't dilating. It's not opening up. So it's really obvious, you know. Clinically, like there it is. Your dog has laryngeal paralysis. So what are your options? Well, if your veterinarian makes this diagnosis, this is what you have. This is obviously what Chester has. Um, conservatively, your veterinarian is gonna suggest, you know, take away things that are gonna irritate the airway. Like get that collar off. No more call it. Great. You know, decrease activity. You want to make exercise easy. Um, you want to make sure your dog's not getting overheated and you're not going out in the heat. There's a tricyclic antidepressant called doxapan. It's being used for dogs that have uh, this condition. In some cases, it seems to be beneficial. A surgery is an option for some dogs. Uh, the most common surgery is called laryngeal tieback. But not all dogs are candidates. You know, it's a very involved surgery. And if my dog were to have this condition, I'm not sure if I would have it done as well. So then you need to be looking at some of the alternative options as well. When consider a natural anti-inflammatory, we know there's a whole lot of inflammation going on especially as your dog breathes more difficulty and the last thing you want to see is progress to this respiratory crisis. 95% curcumin is a great option. We're looking at doses of 100 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. I also have curcumin in my supplement, Ultimate Canine Advanced Health Formula.
I would encourage you to consider the use of honey. I mean, it's a wonderful natural remedy for any of the respiratory conditions our dogs have. Bippy likes it. Most of our labs really like it. You know, the honey is easy to give. It's inexpensive. Can really help soothe that irritated airway. You know, we're looking at doses of about a half or a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. Licorice root tincture. Licorice root tincture, I've talked about using it for allergies. It is considered a natural corticosteroid, so it's a really effective anti-inflammatory, as well as being a really effective anti-tussive, meaning really effective to help suppress coughing. The third big action seen in licorice root, it has some immune modulating properties. So it's also considered uh, one of the herbal immunosuppressives. And we know in this condition, you know it's an autoimmune disease, it's affecting the nerves. So there's a couple different reasons why I'd have you consider using licorice root. We're looking at doses about one mil of the tincture for 40 pounds of body weight twice daily. You wanna use it for a maximum of 14 days on, seven days off. Consider trying it, especially if your dog has this condition. As this is an autoimmune disease, uh, the immune system is attacking the nerves. Uh, you can consider the flavonoid found in green tea, EGCG. The green tea extract is a very safe herbal extract. Um, we'd be looking at doses of two to 400 milligrams per day for sort of an average lab. Being tripter, I'd be inclined to give her one of these a day. These are 400 milligram capsules. Here you can see just how much Pippi enjoys the green tea capsules. Yum! <sighs> Last but not least, this guy, the CBD. The cannabis oil could potentially help out in a couple of ways. First, it's a really good natural anti-inflammatory. We know inflammation is a big part of the reason why there's so much difficulty breathing. Good option. Secondarily, it also has some immune modulating properties. So it may help the immune system more normalize, maybe doing less damage to those nerves. Is it worth trying? I think so. Do I think there's gonna be some like magical improvement? No, I don't, but I think it's, you know, another really good holistic option. It's very easy to give. We're looking at doses of about three milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. Pipster, you weigh 15 pounds. Oh, that means you're gonna get five drops. Woohoo! So Pippi's gonna go home all relaxed and happy when she goes back to her new family. Here you go, Pipster. Thank you so much, Fran, for sending in that video. I definitely appreciate you guys for uploading videos really helps me for creating more new content and stuff that you want to hear about. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on Laryngeal Paralysis. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.